Today's Bible study will be about uh, the man of lawlessness or the man of sin. Uh, as we read in Second uh, Thessalonians chapter 2 from verse 1 to chapter uh, to verse 12. Now, this man of lawlessness is the Antichrist who will come on the world scene at the beginning of the day of the Lord. Okay? And uh, this day sometimes is called the end times. The day of the Lord is also called the end times. And uh, it starts after the rapture of the church. Immediately the rapture of the church happens. Uh, that's when we we have uh, this day starting off let me just before i come to this verse let me first show you uh concerning this uh, just let me write this concerning the rapture of the church this is very important for me to show you this now the bible says in um first thessalonians 4 13 but i will not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope Okay, so Paul is telling us not to sorrow, not to be like uh, people who have no hope because the, we have some hope within us. We have some hope that God has given, has given unto us. Uh, what is that hope? The hope is that um, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also uh, those who sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Okay, so if you sleep, sleeping uh, basically means uh, uh, dying okay if you die in Christ or you die in Christ Jesus uh, God will bring you with him to heaven with with him to heaven for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep okay so if you're sorrowing for your sister your brother your mother someone who died and uh, he was in Christ, then you're, you're sorrowing for nothing because <laughs> you're only having some sorrow for two, three, four, five, ten years or whichever time it is, but very soon you're going to be with them forever. So if you lose your mother, maybe you lose your sister, you lose someone, uh, God is telling you that you don't need to sorrow like uh, those people who have no hope because you have some hope. Because uh, if they were believers, then... Uh, you're going to see them forever and that's why we need to preach to our brothers and sisters and we need to preach to our family members all the time because the only way we're going to see them over and over again if we really love them is if they are saved so our duty is not just to sit down and enjoy and and have fun is uh, to make sure that our family members our friends and let's be long-suffering you know they can abuse you they can say these they don't want to hear but if you really want to see them again because you really love them please tell them the gospel okay now look at this for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout okay god himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise fast okay so those who are dead in christ your loved ones your friends your relatives your neighbors your you know online friends who died they will rise fast. Actually, they will be more favorable. They will be the first ones to rise. Okay? Okay? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Are you seeing this hope? So, us who are alive will be caught up. Now, here is where the whole rapture uh, uh, thing comes in. Because many people say, oh, there is no, the world rapture is not in the Bible. But what is being caught up? Caught up is what exactly the rapture is, will be caught up. So if they say there is no rapture, then can they explain what caught up means? Okay, so we'll be caught up with them. Okay, you see, your loved ones, the ones that who died before you, and the ones that you have mourned about, you'll be caught up with them. So you don't need to worry about anything. That's why Paul says, comfort one another with these words. These are very comforting words. These are very comforting words that you should say and say, Oh, I, I am comfortable because I know that person who I really loved, they died in Christ. It's very important for you to make sure that you tell people the truth of the gospel. Okay? And also, I'll also show you uh, another verse here in uh, um, 1 Thessalonians. Okay, uh, chapter 5, verse uh, 1. Okay, L look at this. It says, But of the times and the season, brethren, 
you have no need that I write to you. You see what Paul is telling people about the day of the Lord? I have no need to write to you because Jesus had already told you that that time will come when you see the false prophet signs and all these things. He had already told you about that. And Paul was also telling people all the time about that day when we'll be caught up, when we'll, we'll live with Christ, when uh, we will be uh, we're looking forward to a city and Jesus coming back for us. Jesus himself, he said, when I go up, I go to prepare a place for you so that I will come and take you unto myself so that where I am, that you may be also. That is the rapture. Because we are going to heaven where he is. Okay, We know, yes, we'll still come back again here on this earth for a thousand years. But he tells us first he will have to take us up to where he is in heaven. He sits at the right hand of the God, of God the Father in heaven. So he tells us, I will pick you up there. Okay? So that you can be where I am. And Paul continues and says, For you, yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Okay? Look at this. A thief in the night. A thief in the night. Now, a thief always gets people unawares. Okay? Because, you see, for us who... Jesus coming he doesn't come to us as a thief in the night because we are already children of the father and we have the Holy Spirit who testifies to us what the father is saying what is happening in the spirit world the Holy Spirit tells us so we will not be caught in this this one is not for us the thief in the night it's for them and listen what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 3 it says for when they shall say you see the word when they they basically means them, not you. Here, if it is meant about us, then Paul could have said, when we shall say peace and safety. But Paul says, when they shall say, because you are not involved, you are not included in this. When they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Are you seeing this point? So... <laughs> They are saying peace and safety is peace and safety because they want the world to be peaceful place. But Jesus himself is saying there will never be peace until the Son of Man comes. So, but they want to create some false peace. Okay, let me continue. I want to show you till verse 11, then we got something else. But you brethren are not in darkness. You see, the thief comes in the darkness. He comes at night. He comes to steal, kill and destroy. But you, you are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief come on you're not in darkness you're not child of a darkness okay you're all children of the light and the children of the day we are not of the night or of the darkness are you seeing this point so ourselves were not of the darkness so if you think you're in the darkness then uh, i think you're not saved because the moment you get saved you're in the light the light of god shines in you okay it comes in you and then you become a new creature a new creature in Christ don't you think that the Holy Spirit can tell you what is happening in the spirit world definitely he will tell you that's why you see so many Christians right now they're trying to uh, uh, watch the rapture and uh, get excited about the coming of Jesus Christ because the Holy Spirit in them is telling them that the day is near that's why because we are children of the light are you seeing this point we're children of the light and Paul continues and says, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Don't sleep, my friends. Don't sleep. I don't mean like literal sleeping, but I mean don't sleep in the faith. Don't sleep in the faith. Okay? Comfort each other. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. You see, for those people who watch the rapture and they watch the days and they watch what's happening, sometimes they are, they are, they are looked upon by uh, other believers as, as, as a bit fake and people say, oh, this person is watching the rapture, oh, they are, they are afraid, they are these, they are that. But the Bible tells us, <laughs> let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Because they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. Uh -huh. So this is not your life. You're not to be drunken and, uh, uh, and sleeping. Because in the darkness is where Satan will come. We are told that Satan comes to steal, kill and destroy. And the thief comes in the night. 
But as we are children of the light, so don't stay in the darkness. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. This is what we should be having. We should be sober. We should put on the breastplate of faith. Okay? Sober. Have faith. Have love to the lost ones. Okay? And to our loved ones who are lost. Love them. And for a helmet. Okay? Helmet. The head is the most important thing. You only see whenever stones are falling from a building. What do you protect? Your head. Because if you break your leg, uh, at least you can repair your, your, your leg. But your head, if you break your head, then that's where everything, uh, ev that's the most important part. Okay? You can do a transplant of the heart, but you cannot do a transplant of the, of the brain. You know? So head is where everything, so that's why the Bible tells us, let's put the hope of salvation. Salvation is the most important thing. Why? Because, <laughs> why should we not be worried? Paul tells us, for God has not appointed us to wrath. We are not appointed to wrath. The wrath of God, of God is coming to the unbelievers. So, it's not appointed to us. So, be easy. Be easy. Okay? Be easy. Stop fearing. The wrath of God is not upon you. And those who say that will go through the tribulations, I think they are still in the darkness because... Uh, then uh, you have to pluck this verse out of the Bible. If you're saying we'll go through tribulation, then pluck this verse that we are not appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake or sleep, we should live together with him. You see, whether we die, to live is, to, to live is Christ and to die is gain. That is what Paul said. I don't care dying. I don't fear living. I don't fear dying either. Because if I live, then I'll preach the gospel more. If I die, then I'll rest. So we are happy both ways. Uh -huh. Wherefore, comfort one yourselves together and edify one another, even as uh, also you do. So you see, here Paul is telling people that they should comfort each other. Even the other verse in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, it says that we comfort one another with these words. Why? Because many people are desperate. They are desperate. They are thinking that, oh, this is the end of it because they are telling us to take this thing or we will not work. They tell us to take this thing or we will, not, we will lose, a, 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 we cannot travel, we cannot do this, we cannot do that. It's okay. Let them do all that. We have some comfort to live is Christ, to die is gain. We have nothing to lose. Okay? They have everything to lose because they are only living for this life. But us, this is just uh, the beginning of things. All right. Now, having said that, it is good to note that um, the day of the Lord is not a 24-hour period of time. Rather, it is an extended period of time. Okay? The day of the Lord. It's an extended. Okay? The day of the Lord. Let me just check a slide here. Okay? It is a very extended period of time. That includes the seven-year tribulation, okay, the seven-year tribulation, and uh, the return of Christ to put down all rebellion against him, the 1,000-year reign of Christ on earth, and the final defeat of Satan, and the great white throne judgment. So that's what the whole day of the Lord is. It's, it's an extended period. You see, with God, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years like a day. So when he says a day, the day of the Lord, so a day can mean a thousand years of judgment. <laughs> you, you get the point here. A thousand years of something. So, and uh, you have to understand Jesus will be ruling here for a thousand years. So the seven years that uh, will be judgments, the tribulation, is just still part of the day of the Lord. You get the point. That is when God now will take control of the world. And now, you see right now, the world is still in control of, of Satan and his demonic activities and all that. Because Satan is the God of this world right now. But it will reach a time when God is going to take over. He's going to take over. Okay? And he's going to take over once 
for all. And after that, after a thousand years are done, he's going to destroy this earth and he's going to build another one. A new earth and a new heaven. And then we all start afresh from where Adam and Eve left. <laughs> okay? So now, coming back to the Antichrist, okay? The, the, the man of lawlessness. The Antichrist is given the title man of lawlessness because he will oppose in every way the biblical God and his law. He will be completely lawless because Daniel chapter 7 speaks of this man as a boastful king who will try to change the set times and the laws. Just imagine that. Trying to change the set times and the laws. Just go and check uh, Daniel 7 verse 11 to 25 and 25. He will come offering a false peace to the world and will, will with his charismatic personality do incredible things and promise big things and breathtaking miracles and he will unite all nations politically, economically, religiously under his leadership. So if you really enjoy if you really enjoy uh, uh, what, what do we call them? Um, prophecies and uh, and signs and wonders and things like that the antichrist is going to show you so many he is going to show you a lot of or a lot of wonders a lot of wonders he'll even raise people from the dead this even raise himself from the dead and even call fire from heaven he will have some technologies that have never been seen so if you if you just enjoy uh, this aspect of uh, oh I enjoy signs and wonders signs and wonders then uh, you're going to be deceived by this man he's going to be a big deceiver okay and also at the same time he will make a covenant with Israel for three uh, for, for three and a half years and then and basically seven years and then at the middle three and a half years he will break that covenant and then uh, now he will start he the great tribulation you see the first half will be a time whereby he will have some false pretense of peace and things like that of course uh working with the false prophet i believe uh, this fella might be might either be the pro false prophet or uh, he might be among the false prophets you know he, he, he there's something that he'll do big yeah uh concerning the the antichrist there's a way he will help so much and uh, of course you know the mystery Babylon yeah? uh, there's a high possibility maybe the Catholic okay the, the city the city spoken the mystery Babylon is uh, Vatican is the only city is the only city which is uh, we can call a city on the world right now which is both powerful politically religiously and all that and uh, the one which has uh, had all those martyrs and and all those things 50 million people were killed in the Spanish Inquisition so we understand uh, concerning all that but anyway today's topic is not about that so in the middle of the seven years the man of lawlessness like i've told you he'll break the covenant with israel with uh, israel and uh he will stop their sacrifices just go and read uh, daniel 9 27 and enter the temple to set himself as god and demand worship he will demand to be worshipped. Let me just show you this. This one is uh, important to show you. In the uh, First Thessalonians uh, 2 verses uh, 4. This guy he will demand and he will say, Now I am God, worship me. Worship me. And uh, if you will not, then uh, you are going to have your head cut off. You see? Mm, where am I? Oh, second. Sorry, I opened first. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4 okay who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God seated in the temple of God showing himself that he is God you see the Bible tells us that we are the temple of God that's number one so this these are verse with a double triple many meanings okay because one verse in the Bible can mean even 20 things okay so you have to check it in all context he'll definitely uh go into the temple of uh, jerusalem because they will be sacrificing there he'll literally get in there and show himself that is the god to be worshipped and also remember he will try to enter god's temples god's temple is you and me 
The Apostle Paul told us, don't you know that your body is the temple of God? So in some way, maybe using some technology or something, he will try to enter the temple of God and be like God, maybe to try and control your thoughts, control yourself, control things, maybe uh, change you to become some, some, some humanoid of something, you know, all those kind of things. So he will try to enter the temple of God in one way or another. So you have to be very keen and even... Remember when Jesus talked about this, he said, when you see the abomination of desolation, stand in the holy place, let the reader understand. Because why does Jesus say, let the reader understand? Because it will not be that easy to understand how exactly you enter that temple. Yes, there is a literal entering of the temple, but also there is also another way that he may enter our bodies, the bodies of uh, the people, okay? Of course, not the Christians, eh? but uh, he will try to enter because I believe a Christian cannot be demon-possessed. So he will try to enter into people. So that's something that you need to put in mind very, 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 very much, okay? So he'll demand to be worshipped. And uh, this, this one is the abomination that uh, Jesus called uh, the abomination of desolation in Mark 13 verse 14 or also in Matthew 24. So having said that, we have to understand that Satan works through the Antichrist because Satan himself is not able to become incarnate. He is not able to have a body because uh, uh, Satan is a spiritual being. Spiritual beings, they don't have bodies like us. So they have to work through someone, through, uh, you know, someone. That's why you hear uh, people are demon possessed. Why don't the demons come here in person? Because they are spirits. They have to possess someone. Okay? So by possessing and controlling the Antichrist, the Satan is going to be worshipped. Okay? Satan is going to be worshipped in the temple where the biblical God is to be worshipped. No wonder the Antichrist is called the man of lawlessness. The man of lawlessness to act as God, the ultimate rejection of biblical God's character and laws. Okay? You, you understand that point? So this action of the Antichrist will cause an, uh, an upheaval in his, uh, 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 in his worldwide kingdom because he'll be having a kingdom and uh, forces from the east will gather to fight against him. But instead of fighting each other, the forces of the world unite to fight the king of kings and the lord of lords who comes out to put down the man of lawlessness and his allies in the great battle of Armageddon. I don't know if you've heard about the battle of Armageddon. Let me just uh, show you here. In the book of Revelation 16. Oops, sorry. Re Revelation uh, 16 verse uh, 16, okay. Is where we have the the, the battle of Armageddon and he gathered them together into a place called in Hebrew tongue Armageddon okay so here's where all the armies of the world are going to join gather there you can just go and google uh, Armageddon and you'll see it's a it's a big flat area let me just show you here uh, let me let me just copy this word here Armageddon okay this is it, it's a it's a it's a certain place in in Israel I believe it's in Israel somewhere there, a plain. Uh, uh, I'm writing pain. <laughs> uh, let me let me see if we can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a place like this, okay? It's a very flat, huge piece of land which is just looks like a war area. Megiddo, the plains of Megiddo, okay? Okay, that's what we call uh, a Magedon. I don't have a clear picture here but you can see you can see it's a it's a it's a really huge piece of land whereby this is where all the the armies will gather so that they can fight Jesus Christ led by the antichrist but of course you know it will not work <laughs> let me show you in uh, revelation uh, revelation 19 verses uh, 19 okay let me show you this it says, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. You see? So they will all try to fight Jesus Christ. Okay? They'll try to say, Oh, now we have uh, weapons which can even, you know, uh, kill spiritual stuff. 
<laughs> I wonder how this game. You see, Satan he knows he already is defeated, but I I don't understand how how he's so much courageous. You know, there are some things also we can learn from Satan. Just persistence, persistence. I think there's always one lesson you can learn from everyone. Even Hitler, there are some things you could just learn from Hitler. Okay, this persistence is just so so crazy and funny. Okay. <laughs> And of course, you know, this the, the doom of the beast and the false prophet. Uh, the Bible tells um, us here in Revelation 19.20, it says, The beast was taken, this is the Antichrist, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the, a lake of fire burning with brimstone okay so they'll be the first one into the lake of fire that's why here we can see a lake of fire ah this is the introduction of the lake so they are the first ones in that lake because later on we will see a uh, satan will be cast into the uh, bottomless pit the abyss okay he will not go with them here eh? He'll be uh, in the bottomless pit for a thousand years, and then he'll be let loose for a little while, and then after that, then judgment, and then Satan will be cast into the uh, the lake of fire. Now, later on, you'll see it's not just a lake of fire, but the lake of fire, where already the beast and the false prophet, the antichrist and the false prophet are, and then, of course, uh, all the other sinners. All the other sinners so that's something that we need to put uh, in mind of course the man of lawlessness loses that battle like we see in this okay and he and the false prophets are uh, false prophet are cast into this lake of fire okay so now uh, the word of God who is Jesus will be will, will be victorious this is uh, something which should give us hope okay let me show you in verse 13 Jesus will be victorious, okay? And he was clothed with the vexture, dipped in blood. You see the blood of the Lamb. And his name is called the Word of God, okay? So him, he will be victorious. Jesus is going to be victorious, you see? The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, okay? This is uh, Jesus Christ. He's going to win this battle. So you don't need to worry about anything. All you need to do is uh, put your trust and hope in Christ. So... A quick observation of the happenings in, in our world today uh, reveals that lawlessness is on the rise. Okay? Lawlessness. Right now, if you check uh, lawlessness, uh, lawlessness, okay, in the world today, it's too much. Too much. So much is happening. When you just go on Google and just say, uh, such lawlessness my friends it's it's terrible it's terrible everywhere everywhere people are killing each other things are happening and uh, you 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 basically don't understand what to do you don't understand what to do this is the spirit is the spirit of the antichrist which is happening right now in our world today and uh, it's good that we stay away from this because this is a spirit and we have the spirit of god we don't have the spirit of lawlessness you have to understand that okay so it's very very important we understand such lawlessness will continue and it will increase much more because if we check in uh, second timothy okay second timothy uh chapter 2 verse uh, oh second timothy chapter 3 not 2 chapter 3 verse 13 Paul is telling Timothy about this, how things will be in that time, towards the end of time. And this is the time that we're living in. He says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You see? So, it's not getting better. For those who say the seven mandate, I don't know, mountain mandate, those for, uh, prosperity uh, preachers who are saying that, uh, you know, the world has to get better and so that we can bring in, so that Jesus can come. We have a, a I don't know, the later rain which will have. I, I don't understand where they get that doctrine because uh, if the world has to get better, some some peace before Jesus comes, then uh, the person that they're waiting is basically the man of lawlessness who is going to bring a false peace. And that's what they're waiting on because the Bible tells us very well, Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But the Bible tells us, Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Okay? So, 
Put your hope in Christ because the world is getting bad and bad each and every day. Okay, and when the man of lawlessness appears on the scene, he'll be welcomed with open arms, especially by people who say, oh, we want world peace and things like that. So for those who have rejected the true prince of peace, Jesus Christ, they will fall for the Antichrist empty promise of peace. And it is vitally important that each one of us is sure that we have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior and living for him. The Bible tells us to be on guard, okay? Be on guard. Mark 13 verse 33. It says, be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. That time is coming, my friends. So we need to be alert and we need to be awoke so that we will not be caught by surprise as many will. Okay. So I don't know if you guys, you still, um, you're saved. For those who are not saved, please, I like to present to you the gospel for just a uh, uh, less than a minute the gospel is uh, understanding about how that Christ died for our sins and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures how he died that's what we call the gospel understanding how he died and why he died okay how did he die he died by shedding his blood because the Bible tells us without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins and it's not just any blood it's the blood of someone who is innocent you know you're a sinner i'm a sinner i can't atone for you you can't atone for me we can't go to heaven because uh, uh just because i stopped abusing people i stopped doing uh, bad things stealing now i think uh, because of my righteousness i can go to heaven no i can't go to heaven by that i can only go to heaven through the gospel through jesus who died for me basically the gospel is just understanding that jesus he took your position you are the one who was supposed to be on this cross because of your sins but then jesus said okay no, no no hold on hold on keith don't go on that cross don't die let me die for you so that if you will believe that i died for you then you'll be saved okay it's just like for example if you've done something wrong and uh you're you're you're, you're taken to court okay and uh, maybe you're, you're there in a court of law and uh, you're about to be judged and then the, the you know the judge will first ask can I hear the name? Can I see the people who are accused if they are here? And then the judge will call Keith Mwoki. Are you there? And then just before I say, yes, I'm here, Jesus says, I am here. And Jesus himself, he takes that part. So definitely the one who will be judged is Jesus, not even me. So me, I'll go scot-free, but he'll take my position. That's basically the gospel. And once you understand that, then all you need to do is just to confess to God what you've believed. Just tell him that Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. You you were buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Believe that and confess it out. You see, sinner's prayer cannot save you. What saves you is what is in your heart. You see, out of the heart, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Was that's what the Bible says. So you cannot only speak what is not in your heart. That's why the sinner's prayer cannot save. Because a sinner's prayer tells you to, to say some written prayer which does not come from the heart but we believe from the heart that's why you have first to believe and then when you confess you're confessing what is in you you only confess what you know okay hope this has been a blessing to you hope uh, you've been able to understand some few things if you enjoyed this video please give it a like you can also subscribe and uh, share to your friends and check on the description below we have a couple of other channels just go and check them out and share to your friends let people hear the gospel because that's the only thing which can send set us free god bless you and have a good time